And apparently in India, like in my hometown, <laughs> there's like this gun chicken. <laughs> like he's, he's like he's like 45, undefeated 45 and 0 dude <laughs> whenever he finds guys checking out his girlfriends what he does is he whips out his balls <laughs> <laughs> what? where were you last night mate <laughs> oh just getting dinner with Abby oh yeah right here yeah. um <laughs> so he's writing his own script here <laughs> Welcome back to the Critical Banter Podcast, where we take the best bits from your favorite late night shows and package them into a podcast. So on today's episode, we'll be playing a Christmas edition of Finish the Lyric, as well as revealing the winner of the Pepper Press on Banter Reviews. But before that, to wrap up the week, we've got me and Miguel, we've got Senny. Hello. And we've got Rohit. G'day, g'day. Alrighty, boys, Christmas edition. I've got a little something for you both. Must be nice. Wowee. We'll open it live on air. I don't think I've been. I don't think I've received Here a present from Miguel. This is the first and only time <laughs> in like thud. ten years. <laughs> did you hear that? I did. That's a good. Did you hear his listeners? That's a, that's a nice little sound. Alrighty, boys, you can you can open it you together. Both pull it out at the same time. Up to you, mate. Up to you. Alright. Okay. Um, I, I mean, is it like do I reach in this like David Dobrik style? Yeah. Go on. Scorpions. Is there something in the hat? Yeah, oh, it's, something it's in a bottle. Hat. It's a. Oh, I'm getting it's iced. I'm getting iced. You got ice. You got ice. Oh, here we go. <laughs> you got to drink it live on air. You're actually actually. Yes. Yeah, Wait. righto. Here we go. Great way to start the podcast. Sure, right. sip on this. Don't make me down Well, hold on. For you audio listeners. I eaten all day. <laughs> for the audio oh listeners, they've been gifted a Smirnoff ice each, to which they must down before wow, we start this podcast. I was told that you went to a sex shop. <laughs> <laughs> when I heard the thud, I'm like, yes, I'm getting a dildo. <laughs> Again. <No. laughs> I was genuinely... I'm actually disappointed. Yeah. But, well. um, Bear with right. us, the audio listeners, as we uh, take a two minute to skull this. Yeah, give us some time. Yeah. yeah. All righty. Enjoy, boys. Thank you very much. Skull, skull away. I'm just hearing the gulps. You're getting absolutely embarrassed, Zenny. Oh, mate, Ro is at least school. Wow, we. Jack Scully would be proud of you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, my God. Alrighty. They- I thought we were saving a drunk episode for our hundredth episode. <laughs> it's just one, right? I haven't eaten breakfast or lunch, <laughs> and that's gone straight to my stomach. <laughs> but no, Sandy, you want to wear a Christmas hat as well? There's, there's Santa hats in there if you really I'll want. Take it. Actual gifts. Can we get yes. off to um, sponsor us now. I mean, un- 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 unbranded, unbranded ices. They have they have no brand to them. Dude, I'm in some strife right now. <laughs> All right, it's all yours, boys. Merry right. Christmas. Merry right, Christmas. Ro, what do you got? Uh, so, this week I learned about a move. It's not it's, it's not a power move, or maybe it is. So, I'll throw it out there and we'll see what happens. Apologies if, is, apologies if I am incoherent. <laughs> but I'm, I'm not even kidding. <laughs> like, I'm not eating. <laughs> anyway, so, I learned about this move from my friend. So, basically, he's in a relationship with his partner and they go out or whatever. They have a good time. And... Um, Whenever he finds guys checking out his girlfriends, what he does is he whips out his balls. <laughs> <laughs> what? So, like, you go out with your missus, having a good time, and you see, obviously, guys are going to, you know, hit on hit on girls at the clubs mm. and whatnot. And so, he lets it happen and then just walks out, says hello with his balls hanging out. <laughs> <laughs> so, he tries to have a normal conversation, but balls out. Yeah, shakes, his, shakes the guy's head and then just, like, and he times it. So, he figures out, like, he's got a, he's got a leaderboard of... Um, how long it takes people for, for them to notice. Mm. So, we've got, apparently, I was telling, I, I was talking to him about this and he was like, oh, yeah, um, you know, the longest time it's taken for no one to notice, three minutes. Yeah, why would you look down there, to be fair? Wait, as in, is he like no pants at all? Or is it just no, she like was just through the zipper. The, yeah, it's the through zipper. the zipper. It's through the zipper. Very gassy, I'm burping. <laughs> <laughs> so am I. <laughs> to be fair, he's wearing chinos, you know, beige colour, kind of blend in. He's got the crown jewels out three minutes. So, he's having to make small talk. Yeah. Like, wanting this guy to notice the balls hanging out to see what he does. Like, there's reactions range from, like, uh, flicking his balls to, <laughs> <laughs> dude, why are your balls out? <laughs> I actually quite like so it. Wait, so, he, he does this everywhere. No matter, like, the location, no matter the time of day. No, I think it's um, it's a solely nighttime activity. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a fun game that he plays. So, uh, I'm going to throw this out there. If you don't have anything, you don't have anything. But do you guys have any moves? I thought no. We, I thought he was going to ask for a time we whipped our balls. Yeah. No. No. Either question, no. Yeah, I don't have a move or anything like that. You know, like a specialty move, like, uh, you know, a little fun party trick that you do every now and then. <laughs> Is that what you call it? A fun party trick? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. But, Dude, uh, no, I don't know. I couldn't get my balls out like that. What does shrinkage do? Like, it's so embarrassing <laughs> if you get your, your balls out and they're like all shriveled up. The wind, bro. It's going to make it cold. Gonna... 
Is that the problem with this? That's the issue. Yeah, yeah nothing sure. else. Not indecent exposure. That's right. Health for someone. You want the balls to be like lowing, uh, hanging low and proud. Is that know? is that is that also like a slight cock or be cocked? Like, has he cocked the other dude? Ah, uh, not not really. I think it depends how you react. I reckon you could be cocked mm. if you don't react in a good way. Yeah, I, yeah. So I the reason why he flicking it, it you, you've won. <laughs> you've won. Exactly. You've won. Yeah, you just so do the- a little. Love tap. The reason know. the reason why he does it, he's like, oh, you know, like they're checking out my girls, like you know, behind or whatever. Yeah. But I want the last thing that for them to see is my balls. <laughs> That's the reasoning behind it. This is rare. <laughs> oh, yeah, this, this, this is, is rare. unbelievably this is rare. rare. Does it work though? Does it actually work? Like, what's this like percentage like strike right here? What do you mean? Like how? Jesus, sorry, another birthday. <laughs> um, like how often does the guy just like leave as soon as he sees the ball balls? <laughs> <laughs> so, so the, apparently what happens most of the time is that he'll flip it he's like he'll whip it out whip yeah. out the jewels and then um the the guys will be like oh by the way like you know your zip is undone your crown jewels are hanging out and then he goes yeah i know oh that's, that's power, a, play. That's a power respect. play that's an respect. respect that's all i had really <laughs> <laughs> just wanted to know like whether he's a rare unit whether he cuck or cucks you know that's that's it undeniably rare Absolutely. Um, boys, I was, I was on the- Wait, One sec, you got any more rices by any chance? <laughs> oh, I got the rest of the four pack downstairs, mate. I'm in the mood. God damn, we'll do it in the next segment, right? <laughs> um, boys, I was driving driving to work on Tuesday. I was listening to the radio and I heard a, heard a headline and it said, police smash alleged cockfighting ring in Sydney. Mm. And I had to pull over. Oh, bro, I saw this. I was about <laughs> to send it to you. No, you did send it to I me did after. Send it to you sent it to me after, oh, but I'd seen go. it already. And um, so I, I've been long threatening, you know, start a spin off podcast. Mm. About cockfighting purely, just with Rohit, because as people don't know, and this is completely true, Ro is the spiritual father of cockfighting in the Australia Pacific region. <laughs> we're both purists, Ro. We're in it for the love of the sport, mm. and it used to be good until all this money and gambling came involved. Like became involved. Get rid of it. It's a bit shady now, but mm. you know, still there's still a part of me that still loves cockfighting. But so I so I read this article, and it said an alleged cockfighting syndicate has been busted in Sydney Southwest with the organised crime squad arresting 35 people, mm. seizing 71 birds. And finding one monolith. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. So, police also seize metal spikes, spurs, and other cockfighting paraphernalia. That's a good term, paraphernalia. Yeah, wow, Usually, they say that about, like, weed. You know, like, you find a bong or, like, a... Mm. Just, like, other... Drug-related paraphernalia. Drug-related paraphernalia. Yeah. But never cockfighting paraphernalia. What is it? Like, little knives? Yeah. Knuckle so, dusters for chooks? <laughs> so, they found, um, they found um, like, this, like, metal spikes and stuff that they attached to the birds before they were forced to fight. Mm. So, there was pictures of it, and the vision showed... Materials, various blades, so of uh, various blades labeled with the knives, uh, names of the knives. So the knives had names. So some of the names were Mexican slasher, <laughs> socket gosh. knife, half bayonet, mm. the Grau 5.56, <laughs> <laughs> and flipping fork knife. Do they name these weapons? It's actually just cod with chicken. Wow. Um, so the organized crime squad commander said um, that it's actually on the scale of organized animal cruelty. It's one of the worst they've seen in 20 years. So he said, by getting enjoyment out of livestock, killing each other and making money out of it, it's quite disgraceful, he said. Mm. I don't know. Seems fine to me. Like, if you can bet on it, it's fine. So in India, there's a lot of cockfighting. Like, the village that I'm from, mm. love a good cockfight. Yeah, which is why you brought it to Australia and, you know, we've... And sit this and and now we're <laughs> talking about the podcast. No, they're like, I was, I actually, so I've never been to an actual cockfight. Yeah. But I've heard the whispers around. And apparently in India, like in my hometown, <laughs> there's like this gun chicken. <laughs> like he's he's like he's like 45, undefeated 45 and 0 dude <laughs> so and this is not a joke like he legit is like the far lap of the chickens right <laughs> what he'll do is they'll be like oh have you heard about this chicken the odds that he gets apparently like basically you don't even bet on the other the it's other like chicken one to one basically you're, one to one pretty yeah. much he 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 um <laughs> what they do is they rile the chickens up yeah. have you seen them yeah they 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 breed them to be so aggressive yeah. And then, like, on the day of the fight... Sorry, let, let me in- educate you guys, because this is obviously some good... <laughs> your your area out. of expertise. You can hear more about this on our cockfighting podcast, Foul Play, coming out in 2021. Yeah. So, what they do is, like, they, they make them super aggressive, like, from birth. And then, on the day of the fight, yeah. what they'll do, or what these guys do, apparently, is um they'll basically just start attacking the chicken. So, they'll just be, like, really they'll like poking, poking and, and stuff. Yeah. Like with, with, and, then, and then, they'll show them the other chicken. And Sorry, then, you'll see this when we all go to a cockfighting fight. Uh, say less, say less. And then they'll throw them in there. In Thailand, we probably could have gone to a cockfight, to be honest. <laughs> so, anyway, so he went on to say that, um, unfortunately, most of these chickens will have to be euthanized. But um, Why? On an unrelated note, KFC have a new nine-piece box <laughs> for $9 next week. I like how he checked his second piece of paper <laughs> yeah. for, the, for the line. For the punchline. <laughs> 
Very it good was there for comedic effect. Yeah. Um, anyway, <laughs> so anyway, I was, I was reading the Manila Standard, as I do most mornings, um, and I read, the prestigious and long-running World Slasher Cup mm. will return for another round of exciting cockfighting derby matches this May, to, May 20th to 26th, 2020. This was an old article, and I'm still trying to catch up on my Manila Standard. At the smart <laughs> Araneta Coliseum in Curzon City. That's where you're from. Curzon City, that's where I'm from. Smart Araneta Stadium. A uh, bit of pop quiz, you know, where that's famous for? I didn't Cock, even know. Cockfighting. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know. It's where the thrill in Manila was. Ah. And now they use it for cockfighting. <laughs> <laughs> Equally prestigious fights. But after seeing this, I had to read more about it. So it's called the Olympics of Cockfighting. And it's no, it was established in 1963. It's the, ni- it's the largest international cockfighting derby in the world, attracting participants and viewers both locally and from abroad. And according to the website, it's elevated cockfighting into a true gentleman sport. <laughs> <laughs> So, you have to rock up in suit and tie now, do you? Wow. Literally, dude, these guys take it so seriously. So, it's known locally as Sabong, as you would know, Manny. Sure. <laughs> um, so, apparently, like, they have 2,500 registered cockpits in the Slasher Cup. And it's... um spe- Cockpits? So, cockpits. Like, like little... Coops for chickens. Yeah. Oh, wow. It's a big... And so, big the, apparently, it's Sabong. The sport brings in a billion dollars of revenue, like, through, like, illegal gambling, um, viewership, and stuff like that into the Philippines. Simulating the economy. It is wow. it genuinely the backbone. The that's backbone unreal. That's like half of Philippines GDP. <laughs> oh, here we go. <laughs> no, it's, that's not on. Go on. So I was reading through. So some of the top names of the sport will once again be in battle. Um, Edwin Toast and Dade Siochi. Mm. I couldn't tell if that was the name of the chicken or the trainers. Mm. Um, there was there's one called May May. Again, sure. <laughs> Yeah, you're looking at me as if he's supposed to know off my heart. Oh, that's right. I would hope that is the best. Oh, when I was there in that city for nine months, when I was a baby, yeah, I remember all these chickens. My question to you guys is: Do you guys so like the Melbourne Cup? Do you bet on the horse or do you bet on the jockey slash trainer? So with the oh, that's a good question. With cockfighting, do you bet on the actual chicken itself or the trainers? So there's some world-renowned trainers. So Hall of Famers, <laughs> including Mike Formosa of Hawaii and Ray Alexander of te- Texas. Um, and local returning champions, Patrick Antonio. So, do you bet on the trainers or do you bet on the actual horse itself? Sorry, the chicken itself. I normally look at the names of the horses mm. and the numbers of the horses. I don't look at trainers. I don't look at statistics. No, that's some amateur betting. Ro, you're a professional. <laughs> you'd be betting on the chickens for sure. You look at the form. Like, you look right? at the form. You'd see like injuries from last fights. You'd see- I don't think they get injured. I think they just die, dude. W- what do you mean? If the chicken gets injured, they just put it down. Yeah, yeah. But like, yeah, they do. But like the undefeated ones, right? Mm, the ones that's that win, true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. they've always so you're just looking at who's two. got the biggest undefeated streak. No, not even them. But like you, you like look there. You say, oh, he's got a slash on the wing. But that's all right. That's not a bad injury, you know. Legless, <laughs> <laughs> he's in some strife there. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. I, I honestly didn't expect to get this far into my <laughs> cockfighting material. I thought you guys would just cut me off at like two minutes or three minutes. <laughs> so I don't actually know how to end this. Um, should we just move on? <laughs> yeah, we shall. <laughs> So this week we're playing Finish the Lyric. This is the game where we finish the lyric. <laughs> Wowee. Wow. Sorry. You got your I head forgot, ar- No, I forgot about that. You got, you got your head around the rules then. No, yeah. All right. So because Christmas- what how dumb that was. Christmas is around the corner. We'll be playing a Christmas edition. All the songs will be Christmas no, favorites. Same rules apply. One point if you get the next lyric. All righty, boys. The first one we have for today. It's the most beautiful time of the year. Nope. Is this- Are we taking turns or you buzz in? Just uh, say it. There's no point buzzing. Um, was this Michael Bublé or something? No, isn't it? It's the most wonderful time of the year. Isn't that what he no. just said? You that's the no, line. Said, is that the line? It's the most beautiful time He's of the beautiful, year. He's a beautiful mate. Sam, do you know what you're saying? No, I have no idea. <laughs> do you want me to give you a hint, fellas? Yeah, go on. Justin. I've got a nice little prop here. Of Justin Bieber's Under the Mistletoe. That should be a hint for you. Is that meant to fucking help? <laughs> Let me the- read the songs of this. <laughs> All right, the track listing row. Number one is... <laughs> maybe this should just be the book. <laughs> we just read. All right, number one is Only Thing I Ever Get for Christmas. Number two is Mistletoe. Number mm. three is The Christmas Song, in brackets, Chestnuts Roasting on an Open Fire featuring Usher. Wow. Could be an all right song. <laughs> Not bad. Four, Santa Claus is Coming to Town. Five, Fa La La Feet Boys to Men. Yeah, it's got oh, some big features. Relevant. What year was this? What the fuck? That's about five or six. So right, easy. Yeah. Yeah. Number six is All I Want for Christmas is You. Mar- Mariah Carey with Mariah in brackets Carey. super festive exclamation mark thanks mate <laughs> clickbait before it was to, real um, yeah duet with Mariah Carey right. super festive don't, don't need to send some wrong advice in there, mate. Um, seven drummer boy featuring Buster Rhymes eight Christmas Eve nine all I want is you isn't mm. that just the same song as 
All I want for Christmas is you. <laughs> Ten home this him. Christmas featuring dude. He's featuring dude. Do something yourself, mate. Are any of these originals anyway? A lot these of are them. All few, few of them are originals. Gets other people on them. <laughs> home this Christmas featuring the band Perry and Eleven. Silent Night. Oh, well, I want to hear Justin Bieber's rendition of Silent Night. I reckon it goes off. <laughs> the the smell of ice is really Glary. kicking in. No, I'm just not happy with this game. I don't know what the answer is. Do you, no this clue. is not how Roddy, you want to have a look at it? No, do, you read it out for me. I'll, I'll get it. We want to move on. Uh, do we get so, one for guessing the song? I'll give you. Fine, we'll change I'm it. I'm sure up. I guess name the song somewhere <laughs> in here. You've got to give me a point. You get what? The whole game today, one point if you get the song, two if you get the lyric. So what one, of, one of the songs in that listing is this. Do you want me to read it out again? <laughs> no, because <laughs> oh that God, doesn't- no. You've got to pick one. I'll, I'll let you pick one. one. Okay. Um, Ro, you go first. Do you want to just name one? I'll go Mistletoe. Idiot. Um, it's obviously this Christmas song, the Christmas song. So if we could give one point to Roe, it is from Mistletoe. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Idiot. <laughs> Idiot. Alrighty, <laughs> fuck me. Wait, this are, game's they, a are these all from Justin Bieber's album? <laughs> I should have done that, eh? No, nah, it's not. Some of them are seminal classics. Mm. All right, <laughs> next one. <laughs> Last Christmas, I gave you my heart. Uh, okay. The very next day, you gave it away. I'll give you that one, Sandy. It's one or two, one actually. Got the lyric. One, just like that, Rowie. It is. Right. It's Last Christmas by Wham. Mm, Alrighty, third one. So this is Christmas, and what have you done? Nope. It's another seminal Sounds classic. Sinister. <laughs> Yeah. It sounds like a very accusatory song. So, this is Christmas. <laughs> what have, what you, have you done? done? <laughs> Where were you last night, mate? <laughs> oh, just going to dinner with Abby. Oh, yeah. Right, yeah. Um, <laughs> Says so writing his own script here. <laughs> Should oh, we I'm leave fine. the room? Sorry. <laughs> right. I guess we're just nuisances um, now. It's no just idea. the Shen show. <laughs> All right, no guesses to anything? Nah, no idea. I'm going to guess Mistletoe again. <laughs> Uh, Gangsters Par- Paradise with Coolio. Close, Senny. It's Happy Christmas, War is Over by John Lennon. Oh, John Lennon. Don't Recipes. pretend like you know it, bro. I, know John I don't know it. All right, next one. Mm. Next one. Oh, De- just quick, just quietly. I actually watched a 30-minute documentary on YouTube. When? <laughs> when? Hey, hang on, hang on. Let him finish. What was wrong with Yoko Ono? Destroyed the band, dude. Yeah, absolutely. Tore them apart. It was actually unreal how deep they got into it. Yeah, d- no, the thing is, John Lennon was a ticking time bomb waiting to go off. Mm. And she was just like- the fuse that set him off. Thing is, like, John Lennon, I don't know, I think he just <laughs> idealistically was very different to the rest of the Beatles. Yeah. And then Yoko Ono was just, I guess, the, the straw that broke the camel's back. Did you back. make the YouTube? Because, like, you talk, you say exactly no, what I've, he said. I've read the biography of the Beatles mm. in year nine when we did biographies. So, yeah, okay, then. <laughs> I, should, right? I shouldn't have iced them. I shouldn't have iced them. It's absolutely derailed. But the thing is, like, Paul McCartney was also on the way out as well. Like, he was ready to call oh, it I'm getting a stitch radio stuff. <laughs> we'll have a John Lennon special one. We should. We really should. Wow, we. Alrighty, next one. John, did you see John Lennon's um, uh, I think it was, so I think he died in 1981. So it would have been like almost the 40 year anniversary of yeah. his death a few days ago, or a few weeks ago. Yeah. And then um, they did, Spotify put like a thing like remembering John Lennon. Mm. And then I think it's like an automated bot. Someone replied to it on Twitter. I was like, oh, happy birthday, John Lennon. I saw that. <laughs> no, you idiot. He died. That was on a, a meme page called, uh, sorry to derail this completely. It's like, it's intern, intern season. Intern season, yeah. I love that. <laughs> hey, back to Yoko Ono. Anyway, sorry, what were we up to? We're playing games then. Are we? Okay, right, yeah. Do you want me to go on to the next one, Sam? If you could, Yeah, please. move on, move on. All right. <laughs> Fuck me. <laughs> that went on for too long. You better watch out. You better not cry. Oh, oh no. Do we even know? Is this actually accredited to someone? Is this not- I just- don't have a credit to anyone. Yeah, exactly. This is just some- Isn't it Again, a-, a seminal classic. Ben, not- you better- say it again. You better watch out. You better not cry. It's something, 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 Santa Claus is coming to town. I know that. Is that the name of the song? Santa Claus is coming to town. It is the name of the song, yeah. All right, that's another point for me. All right, you better watch out. You better not cry. You better not. I'm telling you why. Oh. You better better not not, what, bro. You better not what. Muzz. You better not start an illegal cockfighting ring. (laughs) I'm telling you why. You better not be naughty. I don't know. It's you better not pout, fellas. I don't know if I can. Better not pout. You better not pout. I'm telling you why. That fit with the it is, of the- it is an ABAB rhyming scheme, Sen. Yeah, that's a w- weird word to use. You Ta- take it up with various artists' covers. <laughs> Alrighty, we'll move on to our second last one because uh, Sandy took 10 minutes to talk about bloody Yoko Ono. <laughs> yep. Three one, the score is, by the way. My way. Mm. I just need one to get back on, that's on the board. Santa, tell me if you're really there. Nope, here we go again. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Can yeah. we talk about John Lennon? And no, I'd rather go back to John Lennon. I was having more fun with that. 
Uh, no idea. Um, Couldn't even tell you the name of the song. No. Maybe various artists again, potentially. Yeah, unfortunately, it's not various artists. Damn. Uh, you yeah. want to move on? Yeah, let's move on. It's Wh- Santa Tell Me by Ariana Grande. The line, that was zero chance near the row Seminal classic. The line goes, Santa, tell me if you're really there. Don't make me fall in love again. You were never going to get that. No, I'll be honest. There was no chance. If the song is less than like 140 beats per minute, I'm not going to know. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. Last one. There's three potential answers here. <laughs> so choose your own adventure. Song? Yeah. <laughs> it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. Oh, oh, no, I know the song. Three potential answers. When we were working at Big W Mix, retail store, department store, mm. this would be on nonstop during Christmas. About 20 times per shift. Yeah, absolutely. And I still don't know the next line. I can I can even hear the way he sings the It's Beginning this to is, Look um, a Lot Like Haven't Christmas. This is Haven't Met You Yet by Michael Bublé, isn't it? It's just Michael Bublé. It's just Michael Bublé. What's <laughs> yeah. the name of the song, though? I don't know. That's probably the name of the song, if I'm being completely honest. What? Oh, hold on. There's points on offer here. Yeah, exactly. Um, Christmas time, winter time, snow time, no time. The, the one time s- one time by justin bieber <laughs> <laughs> i don't know the name of the song um white christmas let me white say Australia. let me let me give you the lyric again it's beginning to look a lot like christmas look like christmas you, you better not kidding? pout i'm telling you why <laughs> <laughs> he is coming to town yeah, right? he's coming so <laughs> not even the song name boys i don't know december a, it's a, beginning to look like christmas a lot like know. christmas it is beginning to look a lot like Christmas by Michael Boob. That's oh, the name of the song. Oh I was going to say that. Ah. All righty. First potential answer. Yeah. Everywhere you go. Second That's potential it. answer. Toys in every store. Third Isn't potential right. answer. Soon the bells will start. Again, if it's not- Silence is the answer you deserve mm. for that. What was the score? 3-1. Three, 3-1 one, three, one, one. my way. Yeah. Congratulations, Sandy. <laughs> you waffled about Yoko in for three minutes and you still won. And I still won. So, are you looking for the ultimate stocking stuffers for this holiday season? Well, our friends at Manscaped have sponsored this week's episode so you can have the best gift, this secret Santa. For those of you that don't know, Manscaped is actually number one in men's below the waist grooming and they offer precision engineered tools for family jewels. So, boys, we're back in quarantine this mm. week. It's tough. Hair's growing long. You know, things are just in just weird places, you know what I mean? So, I decided to do <laughs> another bout of trimming this afternoon. Yeah. Uh, in preparation for the Christmas festivities. And so I used the lawnmower 3.0. Yeah. And it did the job again. <laughs> you would not believe it. Again, that 7,000 RPM motor, the revs on that, the skin safe technology, zero nicks once again. Yeah. And so that means I've used Manscaped four times. Yeah. Four from four. Beautiful. 100% hit 100%. rate. This time we'll be putting up photos of the clean shave. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's on my OnlyFans. You can check that out. Um, Another thing that I've used as well recently is the Weed Whacker. Right here on display, no? Yeah, have, have a look at here if you're on the YouTube. Um, and, and once again, I'm telling you one thing, right? What's this, Ro? What are you telling us? And, and I'm going to be completely genuine. I'm going to share something I've never shared with anyone before. Oh, be, yeah, open up to us. Here we go, Ro. Right. I was very insecure about the nose Sh- hair. Share us some insecurities, Ro. Something that I've kept close to my heart. I was <laughs> using tweezers before. You're yanking them out one by one, inefficient. It's prehistoric, mate. Yeah, Get with exactly. the times. 100%. So, Weed Whacker, you put it up there, you just swivel it around a little bit. Yeah. And gets rid of it. Swiv- swivel it around. <laughs> Look, that's- like it's Senny with a jug of lemon lime bitters, mate. <laughs> <laughs> that's a very niche joke that no oh, one can understand. It. But um, yeah, you go on there, it, it trims it up nicely. And you're expecting it to be like, it's quite close to your ears and your brain and stuff like that. You're a bit yeah. worried. You don't want to shove things up too far. Yeah. Unreal. Got rid of everything. But um, look- once again, like, I only plug things that I love. Mm. I'm telling you, I love Manscaped. I no, I agree Manscaped. with you. I, I, guess, I told you guys about my gooch last week. Mm. Um, and someone at work pulled me up and during the week and I'm like, do I double down here? And I did. I told everyone at work that I've shaved my gooch <laughs> using the Manscaped. You backed the product. <laughs> told everyone at my job, the, uh, the lawnmower 3.0, mm. amazing. I, I even offered to show them my gooch, but apparently that's not in our HR guidelines. So. <laughs> but definitely get the lawnmower if you can and you can have your balls. As smooth as this bell. Can you see that? There you go. All righty. And what are we going to offer the good people, the listeners of our show? So, if you use the code TCB at checkout, you get 20% off all products and free shipping. So, go to manscaped.com and use our code. All right, guys. Now it's time for banter reviews. And it's the much anticipated finale of the... Oh, did I wake you up there, Rose? Is everything all right? <laughs> He's, he's dozed off after that one Smirnoff Ice. Bit of a nap. Mm. 
We should drink before all podcasts, I reckon. Or during, really. I think you and I are the only one that's enjoying this. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> um, before I uh, announce the results, either of you want to say any words? Any? No, nope, didn't think Just so. Just want to okay. the results, mate. So, last week we uh, we went through the winner of the small dick factor, which was um, who posted the least on social media about your, um, I guess, training regime that you guys went through. A six six month training regime, that's a bit much. Come on. Most fighters do what? Two weeks before a fight? Two week training camp? <laughs> no, Intensive? Man. What fighter is this? <laughs> a month or two. I don't know. Like Mayweather it- before is Logan Paul fight, probably. <laughs> Um, but anyway, Ro, you won the social media posting. Uh, sorry, the um, small dick factor last week. So you were on one nil heading into this week, mm. um, and then later that day, both of you guys went on uh, went to the gym to um, do the Walla All You factor, which was the strength factor. And you guys want to take us through what happened? I'll just I'll briefly outline what happened. Like, what were you guys doing? Take it away, Ro. We uh, we started off. We measured our one round maxes on what were the what were the ah um, uh, okay you want lifts, the whole yeah. story? I mean, like yeah, what lifts were you doing? Yeah, we did a bit of- we, we started off with the bench press. Can we breathalyze Ro right now? <laughs> Would you blow over right now? No, of course not. We did the bench press first, then we did the, the deadlift. Okay. We finished off on the squat. And then who did you decide- who decided who went first? So, like, for example, did you bench first or did Manny bench first or- I let, left this all in Rohit's hands. Yeah, I, it doesn't matter. So, like, what we did is, like, we'd bench a certain amount. Like, yeah. We'd start off with 40. Yeah. Then up to 50. Oh, so you, warm, you warmed your way up. Yeah. So, we didn't just go straight away. We just went one by one by one. Yeah. And then eventually I failed. Then eventually Mix failed. Okay. And then that was that. So that's how you did it. Okay. And then you guys want to say how much you guys bench for each one? Just for the listeners out there, a bit of context. Yep. I benched 70 kilos. Just. I got to 87.5. Okay. And then for the deadlift? The deadlift, I deadlifted 140. What was mine? One, 155. And I scraped. For our American listeners, what's that in pounds? Or stones? Yeah, pounds. <laughs> A lot of pounds. <laughs> <laughs> Just know it's a lot. 250. Okay. Um, and then plus. finally for squat, the last one, what did you guys squat? 80. So, 150 pounds. Is that actually? No, of course not. It's okay. more, I think it's 180, <laughs> 190. Thanks, bro. <laughs> Sorry. And now I got to 140 on the squat. The squat was where your mate entered the gym while we were filming all this, right? Yeah, that was, that was actually quite difficult to process. We had an audience. I was like expecting empty gym, no worries. We're mm. filming. It's a bit shameful already. Yeah. And then the bloke that I know walks in and he's just like, you know. What are you guys What's doing? happening you here? Wankers. Why yeah. do you have a camera person just filming you? <laughs> yeah. And I was like, Did you just have uh, to explain the entire thing or did you just be like, let I, us be? I just was like, it's for the podcast, man. Sorry. Do you have to witness this? But <laughs> I, don't, I don't record all my gym sessions. Um. So then what happened was uh, you guys gave me those results and then what we did was I divided your one rep max by your weight at the time of lifting. Um, and then what I, what I did was you did three lifts and I took the best of three lifts. So whoever had the better percentage for the th- two of the three lifts, I gave the point to. And I can reveal that Ro won the um, strength factor right there. You won both the deadlift and the bench. Manny destroyed you in the squat. But um, yeah, you needed two out of three. So Manny takes expected. the point there. Just out of curiosity, how did you guys train for that one? Is it just consistently like lifting shit? I'll be honest with you, mate. I didn't. F- I didn't focus on strength training. I just trained normally. Mm. I didn't. Right. I didn't train for one rep maxes or anything. I didn't, I didn't train for one rep maxes until about four weeks into the actual thing. I knew Manny was going to beat me in the squat. I knew I was going to beat him in the deadlift. Mm-hmm. So, the bench was the swing state. <laughs> Another, <laughs> that was your Michigan? That was that was my Michigan. And I was like, you know what? Let's I'll focus on that. So, then four weeks out, I was like, all right, it's time for a bit of a like a performance plan. I was like, oh, how do I increase my bench? I was like, I'll train for one rep maxes. Benched instead of- Usually, I just bench like twice a week. I was benching three times a week. Yeah. Yeah. Um, just to increase like and to train specifically for the bench because that's the one that i was i didn't know what he was benching yeah i didn't know what i was benching yeah I was like, that's the one i need to focus on interesting so you guys never gym together at all in the six months you got to change gyms. gyms damn he's, he's moved away it's like bloods versus crips right here um <laughs> not quite sen but sure so the next one is the elliot kipchoge factor which is um the kenyan runner probably not kenyan sorry about that um but he's the marathon runner so this was the running um aspect of the challenge and so, the, the idea was you guys were going to run a 5K race um, and then the winner would take the point. So, yesterday, we went out to the Bay Run in Sydney. Uh, we did a 5K run. Um, are we going to put up footage of that? Yeah, well, there's a YouTube video of all this so coming out. The, you guys, when you guys watch this, you'll realize that Manny um, got off to a good start, really good, strong start. Like a good thoroughbred came right out of the gates <laughs> nice and early. Um, and, you know, you know, it was an endurance race, the long, long distance run. Um, he led, I'd say, a good... I led four of the five. I was going to say even probably more than that. No, at least was, four was, and a half uh, of the- I kept track. It was four of the five. We'll run the footage. Um, yeah. 4.2. <laughs> he, ra- yeah, he, 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 yeah. he led a gentleman's 4.2 <laughs> kilometers of the five. And then, you know, Ro, like the absolute 
the good thing that the is. The good thing. The only good thing. He got the whip out and um, it was good. I thought he might have put the whip out, whip out too early. It might have burnt out, but... Um, he, he put out early, bro. He, yeah, he 800 put 800 metres out. He put the jets on early um, and then he did pip you. He got past you and then right, won by probably, what, 20 odd seconds? No, nah, it was like 10. 10 seconds. I have no idea. I didn't. But so, so, that's all that matters. So, Ro, you won that one as well, which means that's your three points. Thank you. You have reached the... Electoral college votes of three that you needed to win. Um, but just for consistency, we'll go through the rest of it. So there was the consistency one, which is the what time gym tomorrow factor. Um, you guys sent me your logs of both your gymming and running. Um, and Ro, again, you won that one. You In total, your gym and run, you had 126. What was the split? Uh, th- th- Actually, put me on the spot here. Sorry, I, no, have- I, don't know, I know it. It was 116 and 10. You only ran 10 days. You did 10 runs. And it was 116 you went to gym. I remember it was so small. Manny's was 65 and 41. So he had Bit 106 in total. He ran 41 times. Yeah. So which is why I thought he might have won the run. That was my only focus this whole six months. Look, at least you know, it didn't even work out. <laughs> it, was, it was poor strategy, poor um, electoral strategy from you. Um, and then the last one was uh, uh, the physique, which was the Ziz factor. Rest in peace, brother. Um, He's not dead. He's in Bali. <laughs> <laughs> Living it up in Bali. Good on him. Um, and that one we just did your change in body fat percentage from when you first did the scan six months ago and when you did it um, last week. Um, and Manny, that is where your one solidarity yes. place come from. You <laughs> yes. had a 24% change in your body fat and Ro had a 17% change in his body fat. Let's go. What was your ending body fat, Ro? 15%. 15%. Fair enough. Mine was, what was mine? 13. 13. 13. Yeah. So, um, again, so there you go. Four to one, it will be the final score. Manny, you will be eating the chili sauce, sauce. which we'll be putting it up. But I will say before we continue, does anyone have any- Objection. Objection. Speak now or forever hold your peace. So I do have an objection. Here we go. Kind of in vain because I, it's not going to swing anything, but one sec. I've been hearing about this all week. All I've right. got a little, little paper go. prepared. So as okay. he said. Everyone's got their paper this week. Bro, what's yours? <laughs> I have no paper. Because uh, he won, doesn't really need it. So I have two pages as well, so. Holy shit. How many objections do we <laughs> no, have? No, it's just, no, it's just for the, um, the one category. So we said. What so it? it's, it's for the strength. The walla all you, yep. bro. Mm. So that's meant to be a strength test, right? Yeah. So then let me let me just read what I've prepared, fellas. So given the- Nah, nah, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I can't be asked reading, bro. I wrote full sentences. So all I'm saying is I think the strength uh, category is not an accurate, accurate representation of the strength because of the body weight we have used to calculate it. Mm. So the body, the body weight is meant to be in ratio with your performance. But just a bit of context. So Rohit did his, when did you do it? Your weigh in four days before? Thursday. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So four days before. Four days. Mm-hmm. So he had four days. So context well, his weigh in, he dehydrated. Lost what? 10 kilos in- Four days. Four days. So then he also had four days to regain the 10 kilos. <laughs> so if we look at, look at some academic research here, oh, fellas. Here we, oh, here we go. The papers have been prepared. Oh, it's uh, impromptu. Sorry, guys. And now it's time for TCB, TCB debates. debates. We've got three segments back. We're going back. So all, all the academic research, says, so they say as little as 3% dehydration equates to 30% uh, decrease in performance. So Rohit's performance, he told us on the day when he was dehydrated, he could only bench press 45 kilos. Is that correct? Uh, potentially. I just, I didn't go higher than that, but I could have benched more if I wanted to potentially. Oh yeah. Go on. Now, so we'll just look at like professional sports, for example. So UFC, right? They weigh in, they used to weigh in on the day. To keep it fair, because the drop in performance means you might be in different weight classes, et cetera, et right. cetera. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the only reason why they made it the day before is to keep the safety of the athletes. They don't want them fighting in like dehydrated states, right? Mm. The California State Athletic Commission. <laughs> we did this in Sydney, mate. Yeah. <laughs> or whatever. It's, it's one of the biggest governing bodies. They say you should not cut more than 10% of your healthy hydrated weight, or you will be disqualified from that weight class. So I think Rohit- But you guys were never in the same weight class anyway. We were never in the same weight class. No, but that's not the point. The point is he is in a weight class he should not be in. So the standard should not- His his performance standard should not be held to that weight class. But the thing is he put some of that weight back on when he lifted. So I have I have a video of him completely nude. <laughs> I thought it was a bit much when you started showing me your dick, you know. I, I didn't do that. Um, but then I do have a video of him weighing himself on the day of the- How much was he on he the day? He was at 60.2. So I, when I calculated, I used that weight. And even then, he still won two of the three. 
say less. <laughs> so that's what I'm saying. And I, I, look, I even tried to, I, I tried to weight each one at a different weight to try and figure it out. And still, any metric, he still won. As long as we're using his on the day weight, I'm happy with yeah, it. If I I've lost, I've lost. I just want a bit of fairness. Well, one thing, you know, one other thing I didn't look at was maybe if we looked at your original one rep maxes and then like did a difference in your one rep max over your difference. That, in that was the original metric, to be fair. But then I didn't have his. I had your original one rep max. I didn't have his, so I couldn't do that. So I couldn't I, see. We changed the metric, did we not? Now look, I've lost. I just wanted fairness. No, no. To be honest, it is what it is. Like I've lost. I just want a bit of fairness. I mean, I'm being a real Donald Trump right now. <laughs> <laughs> Saying this to the Supreme Court. I have lost. You will see me eat the sauce in due time. Alrighty, guys. Um, so keep posted for the YouTube video that we're going to have come out. The training, the runs, the lifting. Miguel eating hot sauce, which I'm most keen for. Um, so we'll pad that out in the next couple of weeks. So uh, you know, subscribe to us on YouTube. There you go. And also remember to use code TCB at Manscaped for 20% off all products and free shipping for this Christmas. You can also find our full episodes on YouTube, as Rohit said, for the videos and Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or any of your favorite podcast apps for the audio versions. Send, do you want to say anything for the outro? Uh, I got absolutely nothing to say. Nothing that, to plug this week. All right, no worries. And with that, we'll see you guys next week.